Norman, thanks once again. Well, let's discuss all of this a little further with Dan Hodges, columnist for the Daily Telegraph, Mark Pack, blogger at the website Liberal Democrat Voice, and Isabel Hardman, editor at Coffeehouse Blog at The Spectator. Thank you all for being here with me. Just a headline thought, first of all, because George Osborne's credibility be, was being questioned right at the start of today. Did he pull it off, do you think? Well, he sat down about four hours ago and this, the autumn statement hasn't completely fallen apart yet, which is an improvement, obviously, on the budget, so he'll be pleased about that. I mean, I thought it was, a, I thought it was quite a brave um, statement. I think there's a risk that his, his prediction that the economy is now healing may come back to haunt him. Uh, but he was very open about the challenges facing the economy and he, and he let, left in place one or two quite nasty traps for Labour, so I think he'll be quite satisfied. Yeah, I think it was good for George Osborne before he'd actually even started speaking because there wasn't the sort of pre-statement catfighting that we saw before the budget. So that was a good thing. It also meant that the sort of rabbits he pulled out of the hat really were rabbits rather than something we already knew about, which was good. Um, and those rabbits were good key messages for strivers, for the voters that the Conservatives are trying to capture at the moment. And I think Osborne was helped by the OBR's figures being rather better, actually, than many people were expecting. And being able to you know, cut income tax for millions of working class families next April, an extra cut on top of what was already planned, was you know, a rip out of the hat that Liberal Democrats have been pressing very hard for. But I'm sure George Osborne was very happy to be able to deliver on that. The difficult part, though, of the political mm. message to all of those households up and down the country, watching or not watching, mm. was simply that message that austerity, it just goes on and on. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think what the government got rather better this time than in the budget in the spring was a sense that, yes, we are in very tough times, yes, austerity is necessary, but that it's being implemented in a fairer way. So seeing the extra income tax cuts, which means that for somebody on full-time job earning the minimum wage, their income, tax allow their income tax bill has been halved since 2010. That's the sort of thing that's, you know, I think very popular with the public as a whole because it's rewarding hard work and it's making sure that those who are most in need are getting extra support and help. What, was it really fair to go after pension contributions at right at the top end and then go after the poorest in society and have benefits go up by 1% in these really tough times? Is that really fair? Well, I think it's something that the Conservatives will be happy with. It's something they've been pushing for. But in terms of coalition tensions, the Lib Dems have been very united on this benefit cut today. But I just wonder whether there are actually some Lib Dem MPs who are quite unhappy with the idea because previously the party has bitterly opposed um, freezing benefits. So, yeah, I think there could be some conflict in that. Dan? Well, I certainly think that's going to be Labour's line of attack. I mean, I know Ed Balls and his advisers have been beavering their way sort of through the figures, and I think, I think they're very much going to be saying that this is an autumn statement which actually targets those on middle incomes and those on low, lower incomes. Um, but as we've just heard, obviously, it does present a, a presentational challenge for the Labour Party because obviously welfare cuts are popular more broadly in the country. They're actually popular about, uh, amongst an element of Labour's base. And I think Ed Balls and, and Ed Miliband are going to have to be very, very careful about how they, they define themselves against that because it's quite clear it is, it, there's very much a, an element of politics in this. This is a political trap that's been set. And the question is whether Labour's just, hierarchy just explain can a little walk more. around it. Well, I mean, you've, it, it's quite clear that the, 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 the Tories, as we've heard, the sort of the increase in benefits. Benefits or, the, or, or holding down the increase in benefits is designed to set a trap for Labour because now Labour has to has to answer the question: Would you increase those benefits for, for those on welfare? Something that is not particularly popular amongst the country, but obviously is popular amongst Labour's base. So the question for Ed Miliband and Ed Balls is how they're going to address that, and that's going to be a tricky one. You talked about coalition tensions. Did the Liberal Democrats get enough from all of the negotiations in the run-up to this? Because we can run through a checklist of the things they they didn't get. Will there be disappointment behind I, the scenes? I mean, publicly no, they're I, saying I, they've got... I, I don't think there will be, because the extra uh, move towards uh, £10,000 income tax allowance for everyone, speeding up the move towards that, wasn't really expected ahead of the autumn statement. So that was something the Democrats have pressed very hard for. We saw Nick Clegg in nice. the Commons during yeah, the statement surprise, shaking really. his head. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, when there are differences between uh, Liberal Democrats and Conservatives, in many ways, politically, that helps the Lib Dems, because one of the criticisms in the past has been that we've been too like the Tories. Uh, in power. The big risk, uh, you know, going back to what Dan and Isabel were saying, is over welfare. And when it comes to the votes in the Commons and also particularly the House of Lords, I think especially the Liberal Democrat chief whip in the House of Lords is going to be thinking long and hard this evening about quite how he gets all, uh, all of his troops lined up behind it. One final sentence from all of you. We're halfway point of this parliament. At what stage does, is the judgment made, do you think, about whether basic economic policy of this government is the correct policy? 
uh, election day. I mean, that's going to as be... As late as that? Yeah, that's going to be the moment when we'll, decide, we'll find out who got it right on the economy. Yes, although I do think the Conservatives aren't going to fight the election based on the statement that they've sorted out the mess that Labour left, because they haven't. They're going to have to say, we're sorting it out and we're sorting it out better than Labour would as well. I mean, economists will be arguing for decades to come about which was the right economic policy, but as Dan says, it's election day that's the real test that matters for the politicians. Well, there you all agreed, which is a good point to leave it.